I mean, as a lawyer, we started out talking about certain requirements, uh, NYC service, do you have to serve, what does the law say as a minister? And we thought, well, yeah, the president, uh, the Senate, they must have gone through the laws and the books to nominate and screen and confirm uh, the Minister of Arts and Culture, Hanatu Musawa. So uh, perhaps from the point of law, what does he say about it? Is there something that people are missing about this? Oh, well, I, I would like to begin with the fact that um, kudos to the um, draft men who were able to make um, a timeline for this exercise of appointment, screening, and uh, engagement of ministers to be done within a particular timeline. Otherwise, maybe by now, perhaps, we would have still be expecting ministerial lists who will, will be still politicking around that. So the timeline that was created for the president, the governors to um, um, appoint or submit the, their nominees to the National Assembly and to the House of Assemblies have also made us to at least get to this point where we are now. So kudos to the, um, is it the Ninth Assembly. Mm -hmm. Kudos to them. So um, you can see how late some the list came, even in some states, has to rigmarole over the, the timeline to meet the deadline. So um, to your question then, I think um, the requirement for being a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is very clear. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria made it clear in Section 147 and going to the soul of the matter at hand, section 147, section 5 of the Constitution, subsection 5 of this provision, uh, makes it clear that for you to be a minister of the Federal Republic, you must be qualified for election into the House of Representatives. So if one is uh, nominated by the president, it must be that this person, this candidate, is qualified ab initio to run for House of Representatives. That is the basic qualification. Then you now look at what are the qualifications for running for House of Representatives. The Constitution is very clear too. The primary requirement is that you must be a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The age requirement is that you must be 25 years at least. So this... Um, um, Minister, I was listening to your pre program, uh, Mark said, um, Honorable <laughs> Minister and Minister. So both of them, I don't know which one to use. This minister in issue meets, I think, the age requirement, also meets the, um, the citizenship requirement. Another requirement is uh, educational qualification. That is where we are um, uh, hovering around on this issue of NYC. It says... SSE, or first, first, uh, first school living certificate. certificate. Yeah. First school living certificate. And then you go down to... First uh, school, that's yeah. primary school. Primary school. Primary school. Oh. Yes, then you talk about uh, criminal record, and then uh, bankruptcy, and then employment in any other uh, federal or state uh, civil service. These are the requirements for one to be a member of House of Reps which automatically qualifies one also to be a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So the issue is this NYC um, uh, controversy mm -hmm. on the minister, where does it come in? For me, it comes in more on the side of uh, conventions, more than on the side of legality or criminality. Because... If you look at Section 13 of the NYC uh, Establishment Act, uh, it makes it clear that you have to be what ready to serve, and your refuser, refuser, one who refuses to serve, commit a criminal offense. It is in the refuser to serve that the offense arises. And if you are a graduate, like she's a lawyer, of course, she did not uh, acquire LLM, LLB, uh, BL from uh, secondary school mm -hmm. or, or primary school. She must have gone to university to uh, graduate and go to law school and all that. So basically, she is not talking about I am uh, primary school or this. She is talking about I am seven. 
And that uh, NYC Act in Section um, uh, 13 says a graduate who refuses to serve mm -hmm. is liable for an offense, two years imprisonment, and uh, yeah. or 4,000 naira uh, fine. <laughs> oh, fine. 4,000 naira fine. <laughs> okay, so, but, but if I could jump in, pardon yeah, me. Yeah, come in. The question of refusing to serve, yeah. will it arise if I do not intend to use my university degree for any employment purposes in the country? It definitely arises once the record shows you are a graduate. That section says a graduate. But for instance, politicians... A graduate I that you, refuses yeah, but to for, serve. For instance, politicians, when, even if you have a PhD, some of them, they will go and present first school living certificate or SSE degree for eligibility to contest elections. Yes, so, yes, yes, you need to separate something here. You need to do a kind of distinguishing between one's readiness to serve. To, no, one's readiness to make available uh, uh, his or has a, a certificate of a NYC discharge certificate and the law as to whether it is a requirement. The law here says that you have to be as qualified as a House of Reps member. Which is first school living certificate. Yes. So you don't the need person, to serve the NYC certificate. The person, that, 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 is, that is where the line is. So what's the point of being ready to serve if I don't tender? Like I said at the beginning, convention requires that the president, the National Assembly, the leadership, the country, ought not to encourage this kind of scenario. Where others who are yet to serve will start feeling... I can be a minister without NYC certificates. Where others who have endeavored to serve will now start feeling what's the essence of all these things. Because are you telling me that the state where this candidate is from, this minister is from, that we run shortage of people with lesser controversies, uh, controversial qualifications, or lesser, um, what will I call it? Uh, non, um, uh, no, this has to do with convention. More. Well, there are governors who only tendered SSE certificates too. And, and no, this, is, this, this, is, this, is, this is critical. This is a separate issue for me because the minister in question is a lawyer. Okay? The minister in question is assigned the act and culture. So when we begin to imagine what is the issue, is it that we are looking at her expertise or her milestones in the art and culture and tourism section that the president, the leadership says it must be this person that must be in this position. Ordinarily, you could go for someone that is with lesser controversial qualifications on this particular NYC because you are talking about serving the nation further. Mm. The primary service you've not rendered, the primary service, although it is not a mandatory law, a requirement of the law for you to serve, but it is basically conventional that this has to be. But she has done something smart. Mm. She's serving. She's serving. She is serving. That is the, the issue. She has not refused to serve. The NYC access refuses to serve. And now she is serving. But that puts us again on the table of convention and doing things right in the country. You know, I'm just thinking. So it means... If you have to be a minister, say, um, petroleum yes. or education, but we know in NMPC, they require what? First degree, second degree, sometimes third degree. So if I only have SSC, then I can preside over all of the, wow. Just you can be minister of petroleum resources even with your secondary school. So maybe, indeed, maybe our laws need school. to be looked at again. Because some people will say, you mean our laws actually envisage a situation whereby we'll have only a school cert lever residing over, you know, very important ministries like that? But the issue is this. Are we going to write everything, ABC, as a constitution, everything and put it into a law? No. Otherwise, our constitution will be as big as Zumarok. <laughs> there are things that we should know that conventionally, that this is not proper. Mm. Well, there are actions uh, and decisions of government, although politically correct, politically correct, that sends the negative signals into the, the, the nation. You understand? All right. So, because so, the one that is serving as a core member and mm -hmm. at the same time serving as a minister, 
Well, it's an innovation we are. A in super core well, member. Uh, well, it's an innovation. <laughs> so on Thursday, she go for what is called PPA. 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 Yes, and mm. then. And I hear in NYC now, you have to physically go and do your what's that verification? That. So, mm. uh, so this, these, like are that. The, these are the, these are these are the areas that I'm looking at. Is it conventional? Well, um, Mr. Lalu Akonde has been with politicians, so you mm. might understand <laughs> some, some thinking that we may not. But in addition to that, if you'd like to respond to that as well. So when ministers come on board, do they, I mean, in terms of trying to get an understanding into fact considerations, the kind of expectations that Nigerians have of them, is there something that you see that, of course, they are aware of it, it comes up in meetings, maybe fact meetings, such that they know that, look, they have no choice than to perform. Because if that were the case, why then do we have several ministers who don't seem to be up to scratch in terms of performance and results? Okay, yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's, uh, it, 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 it comes down to the, the style and uh, what uh, Mr. President wants to achieve. And don't forget that these ministers are appointed, you know, uh, at the pleasure and they serve the pleasure of the president. The president has the power to hire and fire at any time. That was why you, you saw that even before uh, the swearing in, he made some changes because he is, is, is completely within uh, his purview, you know, by law, yeah. you know. Uh, so, so, so he is the one that sets uh, the KPIs. He is the one that determines, you know, uh, uh, within the law who should be uh, in, in place, and I will say, you know, uh, regarding uh, 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 Miss uh, uh, the the Arts and Culture Minister, that I think, you know, uh, if we are able to overlook some of these issues, she is a very uh, clearly a very bright and uh, uh, innovative person. That you know, there, there, there's quite a lot of expectations that you know somebody like her might bring new thinking government. So, so I, I, I think, you know, to, to that extent, uh, it, it's, it's useful to, to see, you know, let, let's see what, what, you know, how she's able to prove her metal uh, in the job. Just like lawyer said, she is serving, you know, so, so she has managed not to break that law. Yes, there are other issues that are involved, uh, but to the extent that she, she, she's serving and she comes with quite a very formidable uh, profile. For, for the job, and I think uh, that, is, uh, that is something uh, good to note. But I think another important thing that we may want to look at is that if, if you look at the list of the, uh, the ministries, there are two important questions that the federal government has to answer. I think the president has to answer. Number one, where is innovation? So, so we have the Minister of Science, Technology, and Innovation, and we also have the Minister of uh, Communication, Innovation, and Digital Economy. economy yeah. So, so that, that has to be sorted out. Are, are we going to have a situation where... Uh, you have innovation here, and you have innovation there. You know, uh, and probably maybe this has been sorted out between the two ministers. Because the reason why that is important is that in, in previous administration, even when you didn't have innovation under the science and technology ministry, uh, the, 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 the people in science and technology just assume that innovation is under their, uh, their, 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 their forty. And the people in communication and the economy also with such, such, such assumptions. So, so you, 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 you find out that there are, there are meetings where uh, both of them are contending, you know, that's a, that's a tough battle. So, so I think it's important for the president to clarify where is innovation? Is innovation in science and technology or is innovation is in, in, uh, in communications and digital economy? Secondly, uh, uh, people haven't paid, paid, paid notice. The, the, the president now has two coordinating ministers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so we have the coordinating health. minister for, for, for and uh, social and health and social welfare. So the question is, so, so what is social welfare? Is, is social welfare what we used to have under social oh. development, mm -hmm. which was in humanitarian affairs, mm -hmm. which is no longer there? Mm -hmm. Is it so poverty alleviation too? Exactly. So, 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 so that has been changed from, uh, from humanitarian affairs, uh, social welfare, and disaster management to humanitarian affairs and poverty elevation. Mm -hmm. Now, but social welfare is now taken to, uh, to, to, health. to health. Now, is social welfare the same thing as social development? Now, I understand that what the president is trying to do by bringing social welfare in line with health mm -hmm. is that while he's trying to advance uh, uh, the, the microeconomic uh, uh, issues in the economy, you know, uh, maybe 4, four to 5 percent GDP, uh, figures, you know, uh, on impossible trajectory. He also wants to keep an eye on how that impacts the people in, in, in real times. I understand that was why 
they brought the idea of social welfare, yeah. you know, which is a very commendable thing. But see, it's important to also clarify, is that social welfare the same thing as social development, or for instance, the issue of uh, social investment? Now, some people will say that health is not just a, an absence of disease, yeah. it's also like a total package, you know, the, the, the welfare, the well-being of, of the person, as the case might be. But let me take you up on the first issue which you raised, which is about innovation, because some people will say, isn't it taking for granted that in digital economy, innovation is one of the driving forces of the digital economy? I mean, people who create all manner of things in the digital space, they are innovating, aren't they? Yeah. And then even in science and technology, isn't it also taken for granted? I mean, even in other ministries where uh, innovation is not directly implied, say works, for instance, um, innovation will also... Yeah, yeah they, exactly, they have to be innovative. So isn't it implied rather than... Uh, you know, something that right. must be stated as far well. this is the only place that innovation can take place. Uh, absolutely, and, and that's the point. So, so innovation ought to be a cut, uh, 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 cutting, um, you know, portfolio. You know, or, or, or uh, it, 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 I mean, it should cut across all the ministries. Mm -hmm. But the problem arises when you now put uh, uh, a name on it in two ministries. Now, don't forget that I said that even when that was in the situation. Uh, when you didn't have innovation in science and technology. The people in science and technology, you know, brought about issues, and everything comes down especially to procurement, you know. I mean, uh, that, that, that's where, you know... No, that's what the talk of war will exactly, be. Exactly, you know. So, so it's important. Give us an instance. What are they procuring that could be causing oh, this talk of war? Well, it could be anything, <laughs> you know. It could be anything at all, you know. I mean, it's, and, and, and when, when you talk about procurement, I mean, so, some, some days you don't want to go on live television and talk about, but, you know, let's just broad it, just, just give it a broad perception that, look, there will be issues. Procurement is going to be one of such things, uh, and, and it's important for government, but your point is right, you know, before I conclude, your point is right that innovation ought to be everywhere. It, 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 ought, it, ought, it ought to cut across all the ministries. But when you put, Specifically to put name a name on it, then you've got to be clear uh, whether, as a matter of fact, you don't even need to put it anywhere, you know, if it's going to be uh, cut, uh, uh, crossing, you know, or if you put it in one place, don't put it in the other place so that you can avoid mm -hmm. uh, tough battles. Tough battles are normal anyway. You're going to have them. Mm -hmm. but, but this is even going to make it uh, more complicated. So this coordinating ministry, and I know my colleagues want to come in just a moment, Lagos, please. Uh, but, you know, t t taking a look at the word coordinating, because normally you just have the ministry, Minister of Health or Ministry of Health, as the case might be. Now mm -hmm. you have coordinating Minister of Health and social welfare. welfare. Yeah. So isn't it taken for granted? Because some people have also raised this question as to whether or not are we looking at having super ministers, people who are overseeing more than one ministry, even though they have their core ministry. So isn't it a way of saying, okay, this is your core ministry, but you must keep an oversight on what is also happening in these other ministries. Isn't that what's happening yeah. with economy and, and health? And, 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 and it's a very commendable uh, gesture, by the way, uh, because it, it shows uh, some, some very uh, insightful, innovative thinking that, look, how, how do I get to put my eye on the ball on some of the major important things? For instance, you have uh, Dr. Ali Pate, you know, uh, one of the, uh, the, the, the ministers that everybody seems to agree that this guy has the competence and the experience, you know, uh, to, to, to do the job, you know, uh, handling health and social welfare. And I think from, from what I hear, that the, the, the president wants to ensure that as we are having economic development, as we are trying to push up, you know, our microeconomic figures, that he also wants to keep an eye on the human condition of people. Now, uh, we will need to have uh, a little bit more clarity mm -hmm. as to what that entails, you know. Uh, but to your point, when you have a coordinating minister, you are saying that there are issues that this person will deal with that mm -hmm. goes beyond their immediate purview. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the coordinating minister for of the economy, economy. Uh, mm -hmm. is also the minister of finance, but it means that it will have some kind of uh, oversight on everything that is uh, econo ec economy. But not that one will be seen to be superior to the others. Well, you know, um, that is neither here nor there. The, the, it might imply that one has some kind of uh, 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 higher uh, uh, assignment. So it's considered, and that's why it, it's, there's a difference. So, so, so we, you have two people who are called coordinating ministers. So, so they are not exactly in the same category as, uh, as ministers, in my view. Otherwise, why do you have to 
good coordinating in front of okay. them. So that's, that's, that's a little different. Mm. Uh, what's so the name? Mr. Okeke is already shaking yeah, his head. Yeah, because don't, don't also forget that, you know, the ministers of state have always said, no, we're not junior ministers. There's no such thing in the constitution. So do you want to intervene on this coordinating minister, minister, minister of state? Well, if the focus is on national development, then every other thing will be secondary. The coordinating minister, minister for state, and um, minister. minister. I, I don't see a senior minister and a junior minister. Mm. I see colleagues. Their functions are interwoven, they are interlaced. So we are expecting as citizens to have them work together. If you are coordinating minister, just like we're in this studio, we are guests. We don't need to know who is uh, a boss between you and Chamberlain. You are both coordinating perfectly here. And the job is going on well. So why would people come to serve the country and they are focusing their energy and time on big minister and small minister and coordinating minister and all that? So I begin to wonder what is the essence? What is the need for Nigerians? It's useless <laughs> because basically mm -hmm. what we should be focusing on are the innovations, like he mentioned, and you rightly put it, there is innovation in everything. There is need for innovation in all we do. I am particularly interested in the Minister for Marine and Blue Economy. The blue economy, where we need serious innovation. That is the ocean economy. How do we bring back the fresh waters, the ocean economy, mm. to make sure that all that we have lost in our God-given oceans around the country is yielding back to us. I don't, so, I don't want to interrupt your thoughts on yes. the ocean and bleak because it's very important. But, you know, this yeah. issue, I think oftentimes it's not the ministers themselves that raise it. It mm. is usually the people. It's the perception yeah. of the people. Oftentimes, maybe even journalists, while making, innocently making their news reports because that's how they interpret it. Yeah. Yeah. And they say, oh, the junior minister, minister of the... And then somebody takes offense and says, no, I'm not a junior minister. We are all ministers, as the case is. So... Do you think that that needs to be, I don't know, will I say clarified to everyone that no, look, even though so, but even we, we must admit that even amongst, I mean, look at the National Assembly, they're all senators or they're all members of the, but there must be leadership. Yes. Shouldn't there be? Leadership is necessary for direction. Mm -hmm. So that you are leading does not make one others inferior. So when you have a coordinating minister, what it means is that this is the, the engine room where all our effort is coordinated for what? For national development. So there should be, but like you rightly said, and I must put it in the eyes of the law, does the law recognize any minister as a superior or junior minister? No. They are all ministers of the Federal Republic. And if it is the media that is enhancing or emphasizing the, 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 the superiority, then the media should help us. I'll put, well, us, I mean, I'll put us in trouble now, Chairman. Yes. Well, well, I mean, take this to my colleague. <laughs> yeah, it's an important insight, actually, just to uh, back up what he said. Yes, of course, you know, the, uh, the, the president wants a team, so mm -hmm. everybody belongs to a team, and there's a level of equality. But look, let me be very, very frank with you. A minister, a substantive minister, has a higher ranking with Minister of State in practice. What do you mean by substantive minister? Yeah, so, 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 so if, if you are the minister of a ministry and then under your ministry there is a Minister, minister of State, State. Yeah. the Minister of State cannot bring a memo to council except mm. the substantive minister is absent. Okay? So, so, so clearly there is ranking, like everywhere. There's ranking everywhere and there's hierarchy. You know, but to your point, everybody should be focused on the same goal. Mm. But are there hierarchies? Are there uh, rankings? Absolutely. There's a yes. difference. And so, so, so there's a difference. The, the, the president has a reason, I imagine, for having two coordinating ministers. It's the first time in our history, certainly, you know, uh, since 1999, that you have two coordinating ministers. I think it was started by President Jonathan, who made uh, Dr. Okonjo Iweala coordinating minister of the economy. Yeah. But, the, but this president has even gone ahead to say that, look, I also want to keep an eye on social welfare of the people. So as we are having economic development, I want to be sure that these figures also match the improvement in the lives of the people. And he has put quite uh, somebody very smart to coordinate that. Mm, thank you for that clarification. So I think we can go to Lagos now. Okala Nayo.
Thank you, uh, Malkwe. Let me begin uh, with you, uh, Mr. Conde, and a number of issues that you have raised clearly important. But, you know, talking about the performance and uh, efficacy of the ministers while in office, uh, you are a f uh, you've been a presidential aide, so you'll understand, and that's why the question is directly speci directed specifically to you. How significant and how much damage, if I can uh, go, dare to go that route, uh, can the aides or the supporting staff of any minister be? And how supportive can they be in any, uh, in, in any situation? At the end of the day, it's the minister's name that is going to be mentioned. There is no doubt about it. But then having had an interview with uh, uh, a former minister, you know, quite a list of things were listed that, look, if these ministers are going to succeed, certain interests are going to have to be given due attention by that minister, including the civil service, including the ministries, departments, and agencies that they work with. So speaking about the support staff for the minister, what are the pitfalls, both from the ministry, uh, the civil servants, and from the departments and agencies under that ministry? What are the pitfalls that are important that Nigerians should help to uh, both the minister and Nigeria itself to look out for, just in case? Okay, well, um, uh, that, that's a very important point, uh, the, the, the use and the significance of... Uh, support staff for, for minister, uh, ministers. Now, don't forget that, look, you're talking of a country of 200 million, over 200 million people, a huge economy in terms of our diversity, uh, in terms of the numbers, uh, and in terms of the weight of the problems and the challenges that we're dealing with. You know, so it does require that a minister ought to be able to have his own, if you like, kitchen cabinet. And, and that is where... Uh, the issue of ministerial aids uh, come in. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you look at the practice, I, I believe, in the last two administrations, uh, so, so, so there are, in the presidency, there are special assistants, and there are senior special assistants, and there are special advisors. What has happened in the, in, in the last two administrations, I believe, is that you now have uh, a, a special assistant to the president now that, is, that can be deployed even to a ministry so, so, for instance, uh, you have uh, two ministers of defense, the, the, the substantive minister of defense and the minister of state. Now, clearly, you know, they will be helped. They will need uh, some kind of uh, people in their own kitchen cabinet that has... A bit Do you see a pushback or a tension, particularly at the Federal Executive Council level, between the coordinating minister of the economy and some ministers that may be considered senior to him because they are former governors? For instance, the new minister of Marine and Blue Economy is a former governor, and the coordinating minister of the economy is a former commissioner in Lagos State. Do you sense uh, tension that could, you know, crop up in the course of doing their work? Okay, well, that, 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 that's a very uh, uh, important, uh, uh, good observation uh, because, of course, you know, people come in uh, into the cabinet with uh, a pedigree, you know, so you are right. Uh, some people came in as former governors, uh, some people came in as former commissioners, some former ministers. Now, so, so that, that does have uh, something to do with what happens. But what we must understand is that the Federal Executive Council is the president's court, okay? So, so it is what the president wants in terms of the setting, in terms of the arrangement that is going to prevail. For instance, I understand that uh, in, in Lagos State, for, uh, you have a situation where commissioners and special advisors are members of the executive council. Now, in, in the federal government, you know, uh, from my experience and what we have known, uh, the members of the federal executive councils are only uh, the cabinet-ranked ministers. But nothing stops the president, for instance, by, uh, to say that I want even special advisors to sit in, uh, uh, in council. There are two oh, that are always there anyway. There's the special advisor on, on media and publicity and national security advisor who are always sitting in the meeting of the, of, of, of the FED. But the, minister, uh, the president can even add more. So, so my point is that so you have uh, a coordinating minister of the economy, uh, Mr. Wally Edun, Day, 
who is going to, as you said, of course, super, uh, supervise other ministries that have to do with economy, including one that is manned by a former governor. Guess what? Uh, that is what the president wants. Mm. So, so, so it's the president's call, mm. and the president has taken all of these, I imagine, into consideration when he picks people. And I think he is more concerned about getting the job done and using the people that he understands have the overall competence in, in, in that area. All right, gentlemen, we we'll have to thank both of you for coming on. Uh, Lalo Akonde, former presidential aide, as well as uh, Henry Okeke, a legal practitioner, and thank you for watching us over the years. We appreciate that. <laughs> thank you. All right, then. We will be back in just thank a you. moment. Stay on with us.